playing today. Really appreciate your coming to this concert, which I understand is not like the biggest seller of all time when you say come to the degenerate music um, concert. Um, but I wanted to give you a little background on this um, program and where, where it's coming from. So throughout history, those in power have sought to maintain and extend their power by controlling art. And art, especially new and modern art, can press the boundaries of decency and good taste in the pursuit of freedom of expression. So the idea of degenerate art was not the creation of the Nazi party, but they refined it and um, enforced censorship in a sort of new, codified, and organized ways. Um, the term they used was Antarctica Kunst, and uh, that means degenerate art, um, and it was to ridicule works and artists who insulted German feeling. Um, and this included works by Jews, blacks, various modernists, communists, and anyone considered other. Um, they promoted something called blood and soil values, which were um, detailed in Mein Kampf by Hitler. Um, and the values that they promoted, blood and soil, included militarism, racial purity, and obedience. So much of this degenerate work was banned, and its artists were subject to ridicule, and their lives were made impossible to live. Artists were dismissed from teaching positions, forbidden from selling work, and in most cases, their production was just banned entirely. So even generations later, today, um, this music is barely performed. It doesn't particularly sell tickets. It hasn't received its due recognition, and a great deal of it is unrecorded. Um, the idea of degeneracy was not unique to the Nazis. Um, but we assume, maybe, that things were much better in the United States in the time of World War II. Um, with the land of the free and the home of the brave. Um, but the first piece that I'm gonna start with, which is not actually in the order it is on your program, by William Grant Still, um, things were not so great for him in 1942. He wrote this piece, Incantation and Dance, from the Jim Crow South. Um, and he was actually subject to a lot of sort of similar things that the Nazis um, put uh, forth for artists. Um, many of his works focused on the African-American condition, including lynchings, he was the first African-American everything in American classical music, um, but he wrote his opera, The Troubled Island, and it received a great wild public response. Um, but the propaganda machine was alive and well here as well. A group of critics got together, band together, and panned his opera. And his work still is never really performed much outside of Black History Month. So this is his incantation and dance.
Germany, I think things really started to go wrong with the book burnings in May of 1933. The German Student Union was organizing a cleanse, which was burnings of any books perceived to be anti-Nazi or subversive. This included books authored by Jewish, pacifist, religious, liberal, anarchist, socialist, communist, or sexologist authors. If you don't know what sexologist authors are, those were people who were promoting LGBTQ values at that time, tolerance. Um, so um, the next composer that you will hear, um, Franz Reisenstein left Germany in 1934 after the book printings. But in 1937, the Nazi party purged museums of degenerate art and they made an exhibition in Munich to ridicule a small selection of it. Um, the exhibit was staged in such a way to encourage ridicule and mockery. They only picked 650 works, but they had them on display in a very chaotic exhibit. Everything was jammed in. There were like yellow banners across things explaining why it was degenerate. There was graffiti put on the walls um, just to basically inflame public opinion against these artists and modernism. Uh, to contrast, the Nazis had a concurrent exhibit of um, artists that promoted blood and soil values. Um, and one of their slogans was the three Ks. And that was Kinder, Kucha, and Kirche, which translates to children, kitchen, and church. So home, uh, family, church, that was the values that they wanted people focusing on. Um, a lot of uh, this gener degenerate art was sold in Switzerland. Um, some was disposed of through private dealers, but 5,000 works were burned in 1939. Music, specifically, was supposed to be tonal, which I'll talk about later, and free of any jazz influence, which had pervaded Europe in the 20s and 30s. Jazz was considered black music and therefore explicitly degenerate. Uh, to galvanize hatred of certain types of music, they held an exhibit like the art exhibit in May 1938 uh, in Dusseldorf, during a week celebrating national music. The curator was Hans Severus Ziegler, and he uh, said in his opening speech for the Degenerate Music exhibition, what has been collected in this exhibition represents an effigy of wickedness, an effigy of arrogant Jewish impudence and complete spiritual insipidness. Um, instead of having concerts, um, the Degenerate Music was presented with just audio snippets, pictures, and accompanying texts. Vilified genres were jazz, operetta, atonal music, and schlager, which is basically sort of pop style tunes with catchy, simple accompaniments. Um, anyone who was featured in this exhibition had their works banned as a starting point, but physical pursuit and deportation frequently followed. The exhibition was taken throughout German cities, but stopped in 1939 with the outbreak of World War II. So Franz Reisenstein, whose three pieces I will play next, was a Jew from Nuremberg. Again, he left before things got super bad. He left in 1934. He was a student of Paul Hindemith, who you'll hear later on the program. And Paul Hindemith held him in the highest of regard. Um, unfortunately, when Reisenstein ended up fleeing to England, he ended up being interned in a camp there for being a German national. So he was kind of, <laughs> couldn't find his way. Um, the English composer Rafe von Williams also held him in the highest esteem and lobbied for his um, getting out of the camp, which he succeeded eventually in. Unfortunately, um, Reisenstein, after he, he left the camp, his music um, was never embraced by the musical mainstream establishment. Uh, the BBC was deeply anti-Semitic and his work was marginalized during his lifetime and we basically don't ever hear it now either. Thank you. 
Rebecca Clark now, which is also probably not how your program has it. Uh, and I'm going to play English horn for that one. Um, so I have to switch reads. It's, for those of you that don't know what the English horn is, here it is over here. And it's kind of like a big oboe. They say that it's um, violin is to viola as oboe is to English horn. Catherine, what happens if you get a constantly moistened your reed? Can't make any noise at all. No <laughs> noise. Yeah, it's quiet. Wow. Or you get squeamish or something like that. <laughs> and also, I need to um, swab the oboe out. And I've tied a knot in my swab, which is not good. You don't want to get to <laughs> your swab stuck in your oboe during a concert. Um, mm -hmm. But if you don't swab it out, um, you know, there's you're blowing hot air through it all the time. Then it'll sit there and collect water in the keys, and then when I go to play it again, it'll sound terrible. Um, anyway, I'll tell you about the next piece. Um, the composer is uh, Rebecca Clark, and she's British, so you might not think of her as degenerate, but her work, the fact that she was working at all, made her degenerate. She was um, visiting her brothers in the US in 1940, uh, early on, before the war broke out, and she got stuck here. And um, so in 1944, because she was feeling homesick and nostalgic. She wrote a piece, she was a fantastic violist, and she wrote a piece um, which is a setting of a Scottish border tune for viola and piano. <coughs> and I'm gonna play it today on the English one, um, which is essentially the same range as the viola. Um, but back to the three Ks that the Nazis used in their slogan, um, you know, children, kitchen, and church. Composing was definitely not um, an appropriate activity um, for that time period. Women were not to cross into the sphere of men's work of producers. They were just the reproducers. Uh, women were definitely supposed to be subservient and um, composition was not acceptable and several women artists were mocked and ridiculed in the 1937 Generate art exhibit. So here is I'll Bid My Heart Be Still by Rebecca Clark.
So next up is the Krennic on the program. Um, now Ernst Krennic was neither Jewish nor black. Uh, he was an Austrian child prodigy, and he achieved superstar status with his opera, Johnny Spielt Auf. And that was about a jazz violinist, and it employed some jazz motifs and displayed interracial relationships. Um, he had a huge public response, and his music uh, was modern and sometimes atonal. Um, and despite this huge popular following of his opera, it was condemned by the Nazis as black shame and eventually banned. Um, Krennic came to the U.S. in 1938, which was the year of the Degenerate Music Exhibition, because all of his works were banned and he had no way to make money and his finances were in a dire state. He said, knowing that my name was on the blacklists of Germany and sensing that Hitler would soon take over my homeland, I decided in 1937 to emigrate to the United States. He initially settled in Minneapolis and then moved to California where he wrote the Sonatina for Oboe Solo that I will play for you uh, today. Um, he wrote that in 1956. It's not fully atonal, um, but he was <coughs> condemned for being an atonal composer. Very little is known about this work, despite my trying very hard to find anything out about it at all. Um, I went to the International Double Read Society, I posted on there, I said, does anybody know anything about this? Do we know who gave the premiere? Do we know for whom it was written, anything? Nobody knows anything about what happened to this guy after his opera was panned um, for being a tunnel and degenerate. Um, so uh, he, he basically lost all status. The work was premiered four years after it was written. It was premiered in 1960 on May 9th, so I was looking up May 9th, 1960 to see if I could find anything about this premiere. The only thing I know is it was written, uh, it was also premiered with a clarinet solo piece. We don't know anything about who did this stuff. Um, but that was the day that the FDA approved the birth control pill. That's the only thing I can tell you about May 9th, 1960. <laughs> Not super relevant, but there you go. Um, but uh, back to the students and the burning of books, he said in 1939, after he finally secured a teaching post at Vassar, he said, I believe that the task of, um, I believe that the task of enlightening the minds of American youth is not only most exciting, but also very important, because the future of music will depend, uh, the future of music will on the whole rest upon the insight and, and enthusiasm of the coming generation of Americans. So atonality, if you don't know what that is, means without a tonal center. Um, so music throughout history, through nature or nurture, we take a note and we always want to hear that note again. If the piece is in D major, you know, we hear a bunch of stuff and then we get back to here. And our body needs us to go to here, right? That makes us happy. But the Germans weren't happy because a lot of composers got rid of that language. They decided we're going to move on from that and they took the 12 notes of a song and they put them randomly together and created variations and, and melodies and harmonies based outside of that tonic structure. Um, and for that, Krennic was condemned and Hindemith was condemned, even though they were also not Jewish. Um, but that was the modern horror that they had presented. Anyway, this piece is supposedly atonal, but it focuses on the note D. You hear that it's a short piece, six minutes long. It focuses on D for three of the four movements and F for another one of the movements. So by our ears today, it's not tremendously out there. It's not tremendously modern, but there you have it.
Schindemith is by far the most famous composer on this program. He was, like Krennic, neither Jewish nor black. Um, but he had a whole section of the degenerate music exhibition dedicated to his work. The minister of propaganda in Germany, Joseph Goebbels, publicly denounced Hindemith as an atonal noisemaker. And he was forced to sign an oath of allegiance to the Nazis in 1936, which any artist had to do in order to work. It was a requirement. Um, but they banned his work anyway just nine months later in October. And then he was featured in 1938 in Dusseldorf at the Degenerate Arts Exhibition. Um, he had a Jewish wife, which sort of cemented his um, position as not cool. Um, and so he moved to Switzerland in 1938, mostly to protect his wife, and then to the US in 1948. He was a committed modernist. He had leftist friends who collaborated with both Jews, modernists, um, you know, and, and he was basically a leftist himself. Um, he came to the United States and secured a professor professorship at Yale in 1941, which was the year he wrote his English horn sonata, which we will play next. Um, for a while, his music was considered some of the rare German music that was free of Nazi influence. Um, and uh, the Allies celebrated his music on the stages um, in occupied zones. Um, this English horn sonata is very dark, um, just to tell you up front. Uh, there's an oboe sonata also that I considered programming, which is actually a little bit less dark. Um, but uh, considering that militarism was considered a virtue and Hindemith was degenerate, it uh, doesn't really work for me because this piece for me has a tremendous amount of militarism that I hear in it. Um, anyway, it's uh, six movements long and I hope you, I don't know if enjoy is the right word, but uh, <laughs> I hope it does something for you. <laughs> Thank you. 
think is actually accurate for your program. Um, Pavel Haas was a Czech Jew, and he divorced his wife in an attempt to save her and their daughter, and he was successful. Um, and uh, when the Germans invaded Czechoslovakia, he wrote a protest piece um, for tenor and piano. And fearing for his life, he destroyed the tenor part and the words. Um, but he didn't want to lose the work entirely, so he reworked it for oboe into what you will hear now. Um, he was eventually deported to the artist colony propaganda camp called Terezin, also known as Theresienstadt. Um, there's a very chilling photograph of him you can see online, sort of sitting basically at gunpoint next to a bunch of German officers watching a film um, for the propaganda. He wrote eight pieces in the camp, but only three of them survive. This is the last piece we know of that he wrote before he went to the camp. Um, this piece is uh, very defiant, and he quotes the Hussite hymn, Ye Who Are God's Warriors. Hold on a second. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. Um, so he has two like Czech nationalist. Um, yeah. Here we go. Um, so whenever you hear that, that's a symbol of Czech militancy, and it's been that way ever since uh, Bedrick Smetana's Mavlast. Uh, the Czech people know that as a as a symbol of their uh, their own. Uh, Militants. So he um, he put that in here uh, in the second movement, um, and you will also hear in the last movement uh, the Saint Wenceslas Chorale, um, which has been used throughout Czech history, especially in the 20th century, century, to symbolize the Czech people whenever danger is threatened. Um, so the piece ends with this, but here's just the the hymn as you would hear it. <laughs> tragic but very, very hopeful as well. And finally, I wanted to share one quote from the American Helen Keller, whose books were burned uh, in the uh, 1933 book burnings. She published an open letter to German students um, about her works and all the other authors who were burned. I mean, and the number of authors that were burned and the, the extent of the writing there was just enormous. And basically anything that we think of as good now was burned. Um, so she said, you may burn my books and the books of the best minds in Europe, but the ideas those books contain have passed through millions of channels and will go on. 